Um, the ASVS is literally a standard. It's designed to be testable. Um, a lot of the other things that we do, um, for example, the OS Top 10, it's more of an awareness and training piece. The ASVS is designed to be used by developers and many others. When we first did the ASVS, um, I think the overall use was more or less as a source code review checklist. Um, but over time, it's actually been used for a whole bunch of stuff, including architecture and things like that. The problem is, is that over time, 4.0 is mm -hmm. an example of this. 4.0 has so much in it. Should it have that amount of stuff? So the other thing that we would recommend, I'm going to let Jim talk about this, is how to fork the ASVS because the ASVS is huge and maybe it doesn't meet your requirements and we encourage forking. So, so yeah. So Andrew, the reason why my opinion is more issues is better is because I don't expect every team to use ASVS out of the box. I expect no one to. So we're adding all these new sections on JSON web tokens. We're adding sessions on web sockets. But if your system doesn't use web sockets, drop that section. And if your section doesn't use JSON web tokens, then drop section. So the whole point of the standard really is to have a base of requirements that is complete as possible that we hand to you as, as, your, as a different development team or security testing team and for you to fork off it to make it relevant. And I've helped many teams fork ASVS. The most common fork, Andrew, is to drop authentication and session management requirements and instead have a list of requirements around how to integrate with our identity provider. That's one example of how you can fork the application security verification standard so it's more relevant to your team. <clears throat> Absolutely. So who's leading the uh, ASVS? Well, obviously, um, Daniel Cuthbert and myself have been longtime uh, co-leads. Jim and Ilar and Josh are actually the most active co-leads right now. And Ilar is one of our newest leaders. Um, we really do appreciate all of the work that he's put in for us. And he's been amazing uh, getting some of the stuff corrected and stuff like that and just simply moving through the tickets. Um, and, and, and Jim, let me talk about Alar. I've worked with him a lot the last six months. Alar came at me a few months ago and said, Jim, this, the leadership of ASVS is not being responsible in their duty. We have a lot of pending comments and active people and the leaders are not doing enough work here. And I got really angry with him and thought about it and went back to him and said, yeah, you're right. And I'm going to change that. And I jumped in as with Josh Grossman's been super active when he can. Mm -hmm. I, I've after getting lectured by Alar, getting 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 slapped by Alar, I became more active. And he yep. is hyperactive. He was right. So he, and he was he was a little he's a little punchy about it, but he got me active again and he got me excited about ASVS again. And his mm -hmm. comments are some of the most astute comments for uh for all uh, some of the most astute comments we're getting from contributors so as punishment to alar for all of his like attacks towards me i we made him a co-leader as his punishment so now so, <laughs> so i'm just saying that why i why alar is so important to the OWASP foundation is because even when leaders weren't active even when communication died he would never stopped volunteering and kept pushing mm of how important the standard is. So I just want to celebrate him doing that. Alar Lang is critical to the OWASP Foundation and the work of the ASVS standard. There you go. Oh, absolutely, 100%. And actually having healthy <laughs> challenges to leadership is actually a really good thing. One of the things I did when I became the co-leader of the top 10 is immediately appoint more leaders. And that has actually saved the OWASP top 10 2021. Um, people's lives change and we get busy. I was doing the top 10 2021 during the time that I was basically saying, no one's talking to me. Well, there's only so much time. So yeah, no, it's fantastic. And it's healthy to have new leadership coming from time to time as well. I, I agree. We, and, and a quick note, like when, when uh, uh, let, let's, let's charge ahead. Never mind. I, I, I digress. The beginning yeah. of ASVS was Mike Baberski and Jeff Williams in 2008. And they were pioneers when it comes to application security standards. It was earlier designed, so only a small percent was verifiable and 80% was more for pen testing. There's eight levels at that time. And why this is so important is at this time, there were no standards even close to addressing application security details. And even out 
Now in 2021, there are no application security standards that go into this level of detail. So Mike and Jeff, Dave Wickers was involved in this as well. They pioneered a standard that we're going to still be working on a decade from now, in my opinion. And it's really, really yeah. a great project that I'm really excited about. So the interesting thing is almost every single item that Mike and Jeff put in there and Dave is still in there. Oh, oh it's still in there now. <laughs> oh, I, the, very right few off, things I, were. I thought you were going you know, in the direction with that one. That's, that's great. No. No, they got it right. It was fantastic. Um, essentially, the, the first version only had 120 something controls in total, okay. even though it had eight levels. But the reality is, is that almost all of them are still there. I, I love to give Jeff Williams a hard time. It's like one of my sports, but <laughs> Jeff, was, Jeff was doing AppSec like at the before the industry was named AppSec. Same with Baberski. So they're some of the real early pioneers in our industry and their work mm -hmm. still helps us today. But again, I still love to give Jeff a hard time. Just a sport. It's just a hobby. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. So the numbering, we are coming up to a breaking uh, change and we're going to be calling the next version 5.0. And we'll show you some of those changes coming up um, if we have some time. But yeah, Jim, do you just want to talk about the difference between non-breaking and breaking and why we decided 5 was the correct choice? As we're going through the different, like 4.0 is, is an acceleration of activity, more volunteers, we have like five or six volunteers that are like reading this meticulously, commenting on, on different changes. So we were going to release 4.1, but we, we want to make a breaking change. And what that means is we want to renumber the whole standard. So a non-breaking change is when we're honoring the version number of each requirement. And we'll leave, and if we're going to remove a requirement, we'll leave a gap where that requirement used, used to exist. Now, when we go to 5.0, this is going to be a breaking change. We're not going to reference any of 4.0. 4.0 is, 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 is old and 5 is going to be a whole fresh. So we're not going to mention where we changed something or add something or modified something. Likely, we're going to cut a whole new version with all new requirement numbers so we can start fresh and have a complete standard. And we really, we didn't plan to do that. We wanted to release version 4.1 but the activity that we're getting for changes and their astute changes is so is so much we have enough activity that it really mandates we we push out 5.0 and, and if we do push out 4.1 which are still a little bit debating i think that's going to be a distraction to getting 4. Point, or getting 5.0 out because at this point even if we do release 4.1 it's going to be pretty much close to 5.0 the changes are so dramatic and this is a this is an indicator of two things an increase of volunteer activity of this key standard, and just an increase in the use of the ASVS. I run into users of ASVS all over the place now, way beyond just the, you know, the OWASP community. This is now something that's, that's out there a lot. And I know that as a consultant, I used to charge a lot of money to write standards for companies, a lot, and it's insane. And this is now this eliminates that part of the consulting world, which I think is good. We now have an initial standard requirement, and as a consultant, we can all help companies fork and fine tune their standards, but with a good common base. So again, the changes are so much, it's so used now that we have enough changes pending in our working directory. The working directory is the 4.0 English directory the changes are so much, it mandates we release 5.0 next, I think. Yeah. And I think, honestly, we probably need to sort that out and maybe revert the 4 to 4 so we've got a history of it um, because it, it's getting to the point now where it's very hard to work out what is still 4. Um, but yeah. we've got, I, we've got I, to, I think we've got to get better at doing Git. <laughs> I, we're, we're getting better. And Andrew, every, if you look at some of the new, pro, we've added significant new process in the yeah. last few months, we have a labeling system so we can keep track of all the issues. Is the issue like waiting for further discussion? Are we awaiting a PR? Is it closed, but there's still lingering issues? So we've been, mm -hmm. we've, Alar set up a big a labeling system for all our issues, number one, and every requirement change we make now, we're labeling it as added new, deleted, um, modified, or moved from a different number. So we're not sure what 5.0 is gonna look like completely, but we're in the requirement in the English 4.0 directory. Every time we've changed something away from 4.02, we've mm -hmm. labeled it 
So when we do, when it comes time to make 5.0, we know if that requirement is new. Did we modify it from 402? Is it is it been removed? Did we merge? Did we split a requirement? All these activity, mm -hmm. but we're labeling every requirement with that activity. So maybe we can, we can cut a 4.1 and a 5.0, please no, but we can if we need to. We have the metadata ready for when the, mm -hmm. the new version is going to be cut, whatever that might be. Okay, so that, that leads on the next slide, which is great. Um, we roughly, roughly release every roughly keyword, every keyword roughly, Andrew. Keyword yes, roughly. and so it was released in March 2019. So theoretically, a good time to release it would be in the first half of next year, uh, which is why we're working so hard on it right now. But will it be released in the first half of the next year? We don't yeah. know. I think I'd, I'd prefer to have a really solid release that's a little late which is what happened to the OS top 10, um, then to have an early release that's a bit rough. Uh, Jim, thoughts? Just another meta thought is like, I really think that when someone approaches OWASP, especially a developer who wants to get into secure coding, it's hard to find that knowledge. I would start by reading the OWASP top 10 and then put it down and then go read the ASVS requirements and then go to the cheat sheet series to look at those up to read about those details. But this is a great mm -hmm. progression after you read the OWASP top 10, which is a great way to start. This is a more yep. complete, just more complete discourse. And I also I also hear that Nullcon, one of the best conferences on the circuit, go to Nullcon. I hear good, really good things about their organization and similar. And 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 and, and, and our <laughs> I'd rather have a, a late deployment of, of ASVS5 than, than hitting an arbitrary time, right? I want to get it yep. right. And finally, I really think that, not, not finally, I think we have the team and I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not commenting on older teams. We have so many people active from a lot of different um, areas that it's, it, we have like critical mass in terms of like necessary technical diversity to get this done. And exactly. another quick note, one of the other main contributors is the gentleman from the Netherlands, I don't know how to pronounce his name well, Sjord, Sjord, S-J-E-O-R-D, he corrected my, so I had a, a gentleman from the Netherlands who's natively does not speak English, correct my English use of grammar in one of the requirements. And I was like, that we've hit critical mass at this point. So yeah, well, fun anyway, fact, I, I, digress. I digress, Andrew, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> A, I can definitely back Nolcon has been a great conference. Uh, I had a really good time there. It's one of the best ones I've been to. Did you, uh, dance, on to, the beach? Did you dance on the beach in Goa, Andrew? Did you? Well, I was actually staying in a hut on the beach a few kilometres up the road, and it was fantastic. I definitely will go back. It's it's definitely one of the beautiful places in this world. Um, but also, um, just going back on that, Torsten, uh, one of our co-leads on the Ars Top 10, he is one of our grammar people and he's German and he doesn't speak English as <laughs> <his> first <laughs> language. That, that, that makes sense, right? English is really just German anyways, right? All right. I did not, <laughs> I did not say that. I love, I, I, yeah. I, love <laughs> I do love it when my European allies correct my use of the English language. It's a special moment. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I just want to really just go back on this fork thing, just real brief because yeah. we're actually running short of time. I would Work suggest... If you are going to fork it, you can delete things, no problems. But if you're creating new things that are unique to yourself um, that aren't related to the ones we have, please use 50 plus because we'll never get there. And that means that you, you can actually then just keep your stuff around as you see fit and keep on merging with us. So what, what you're saying is if you're going to fork ASVS, step number one, it's okay to delete item requirements, just delete them. But if you're going to add a new one, don't overwrite one of our numbers, add it to a, add it as a new number at the end of the standard, and then contribute it back to us for consideration to merge back into the standard. You're not allowed to fork ASVS and make your own requirements without giving it, giving it back as a PR or an issue back to the standard. Is that what you're trying to say? Absolutely, 100%. Yep. With you. Um, and if, in fact, that's how we got a lot of the web service stuff. Uh, the gentleman from the Netherlands gave it to us because he needed it and he felt that this was a good contribution and that became the web service chapter. He's, he's one of the most epic contributors as well. He's the ninja. I, I, I'm not pronouncing his name right. 
He's one of our main contributors out of the Netherlands. You can see his hyperactivity in GitHub. And he's another mm -hmm. like ninja surgeon helping us clean up small mistakes, mm -hmm. big mistakes that we look overlooked. So excellent. Yep. Okay, so we've got 5.0 in development now. We've got seven minutes. So we'll just get through the rest of these slides and we'll have a look at it. Um, if you're interested in helping, we are very interested in getting help, um, particularly if you code, because one of the things that really interests me is are the things we're suggesting, are they still relevant and are they still effective? Because there's nothing worse than actually having something in the um, in a standard such as, for example, some of the um, ITGC controls that you get asked in supply chain questionnaires is what's your password rotation uh, value? And it's like, why the hell are you even asking this? It's not an effective control, but it's part of ITGC. So what we would like to see is make sure that people uh, validating our work and make sure that it's relevant. But also as more and more folks get into the cloud and we've, we're trying to address in an agnostic way all of the new cloud stuff, but obviously if you're a practitioner, you may know something we don't. Please help. Okay, so mappings. Um, there's a team at OWASP called um, the Project Integration Standards. And one of the pieces of work they're doing is the CRE, which went into beta today, I believe. Um, I'm very interested in this outcome. Now, we also have Torsten working on the OSIB, which is a very similar mechanism, but it's generated automatically from the OS top 10. This is more of a, a mapping to, ma to match all mappings. I like the fact that it's actually about requirements, which is roughly where the ASVS lies. Um, weaknesses aren't a good way of developing software because there's billions and an infinite set of weaknesses, but there's only probably a very limited number of requirements. And so I love the idea that there's actually a common requirements enumeration. If you are interested in getting involved and helping map stuff around, this will actually help us in the long run too, Jim, because it allows 5.0 to be mapped back to four. Is this is something that MITRE is working on or a CRE, an OWASP project, or? There's a few people working on it that are actually not part of the OWASP, um, uh, you know. You this know. is basically like a CVE list or, or like our CWE list, but a list of actual requirements, like things you must build in software for security, as opposed to discussing vulnerabilities. Did I get that right? Uh, it, it's not so much like the ASVS as it is a mapping technique. Okay, so, I, got, I got you, I got you. So if you're talking about SQL injection and as, you know, um, CWE79, what is that in the ASVS? That helps this mapping. 5.33, 5.33, I think. Anyways, I digress. Yeah. It's not, we don't discuss SQL injection. Wait a second, SQL injection is attack. We discuss parameterized queries in the ASVS. Yeah. So my ask is CRE, are they discussing like SQL injection or are they discussing parameterized queries? That's all I'm That's asking. a really great question that I don't know the answer to because I've not enough. been heavily involved. I would encourage everybody to get involved, including us. Just for the record, because we're not really giving a talk. Andrew and I are, Andrew and I are just kibitzing here. Sorry about that. <laughs> so the team does actually have a leadership <laughs> meeting that this is actually how it goes. We, yes. we have this back and forth discussion <laughs> and we bring up the issues in GitHub and we go bam, 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 make decisions, get it done. Um, it's fantastic. We do need to keep doing that. Um, so yeah, okay. development of 5.0 is underway right now. We're targeting an, a late 2021, but more realistically, early 2022 release. Um, mm. We're gonna have, when, when we're releasing our early version, we're gonna be really loud to announce peer review and QA, but you can do that now. Again, if you go to ASVS, go to GitHub, go to the 4.0 EN directory, English directory, and you'll see all the activity we're working on. So you can wait for our release, or you can do it now. Um, June of 2022, we're releasing at AppSet Dublin. I'm gonna be there with a Guinness in hand. Post-release, we'll, we'll do dot releases as necessary to correct mistakes. But this is our plan right now. Uh, AppSec Dublin, Owen Carey, I'm going to see you there. And we're, 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 I'm looking forward to having our final 5.0 release. Absolutely. Um, okay, just zooming through the last couple of slides because I do want to show everybody um, the repo. If you want to write a companion guide from scratch from us around ASVS, there's several others who have this interest. If you let us know, I'll connect you with the other folks who would like to write a companion guide. Either, and, you know, 
it basically should be a reference to other OWASP material. We have some ideas. What do we mean by this verification? How can we expand on it? Sometimes we'll point to a cheat sheet. Sometimes we'll point to another wiki page. Sometimes we'll write a new guide for it. Either way, this is a great side quest for anyone who's into ASVS and wants to help us explain the requirements beyond a one or two sentence requirement. Absolutely. Next um, okay. So if you've got questions, I'll be hanging around for the entire day at this one here with the 20th anniversary flagship projects. But let's go directly and have a quick look at the GitHub repo. Um, Jim, can you see it? I sure can. So let's let's go look at code, Andrew. Let's go to 4.0 and there's, let's go to English, Ian. Just Ian, boom. This is where all the active work is getting done. You should see some check-ins for me uh, oh, like yeah. last night, right? So go look at authentication 18 hours ago. There you go, Andrew. Yeah, the, it's actually really busy. There's a lot of check-ins happening and this is, you know, you don't often hear about this work, but it's really important that you understand that it is actually going ahead. And we love contributions and issues and pull requests. Um, so the way to influence us is through logging issues. And the best way to influence us is the pull request. <laughs> yes. And we like discussion first. We like an issue first. We discuss it because we've done a, we've, we've gotten a lot of PRs without explanation. We need to discuss yeah. this. So an issue is best first. But we'll, we'll, especially if it's minor, we'll take a PR directly as well. But however you want to volunteer and help us, I'm open to accepting your volunteerism any way we can. So if you're interested, let us know. Yeah. The other thing I really want to just highlight is that we did in version four, although it's got a good renumber here as well, um, we have a separate section for API callouts. Now, we're actually in the middle of a leadership discussion about architecture and what should happen there. Do we sprinkle it amongst everything else? Personally, I think we come up with the right answer here, which is to sprinkle it amongst everything else and have a much shorter version one. I agree. That's, yeah. that's kind of my view as well. There's a lot, a lot of duplicate requirements. It was a good effort, but it just it duplicated things. We ended up like ripping them all out anyways in the yep. deduping process anyway. So we'll see architecture level one that should really be about threat modeling process, I would dare say, more than anything else. Yeah. I, love threat, I love threat modeling, Andrew. Love it. Yeah. I, I'm, if we pivot architecture to be about secure design and the yeah. things that would enable software to be built securely, I think V1 will be our much stronger section. That's a volunteer I need strongly right now because all the other sections, we have an idea of our plan. Architecture, we want to rewrite it to sync up with threat modeling and secure design instead of having another list of requirements. So that, that's something a threat modeling expert could really sink their teeth into and help us for this next version. But I digress. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if you are interested in getting involved, there is an ASVS Slack channel. Obviously come and talk to us at the GitHub repo, uh, which is uh, OS slash ASVS. Um, you can download the last version uh, from our project homepage but that's starting to get a bit long in the tooth, which is why we really would appreciate your input and help with getting 5.0 out the door. And that's about all that I really wanted to talk about. Jim, is there anything else? Yeah, I got one more thing to say. Andrew, in the last like year, I watched a lot of the toxicity that was part of the OWASP Foundation fade. Staff are not like traumatized as much every day now. And like people are getting along better at a time when society is like having a lot of problems. I feel a lot of cohesiveness in the OS Foundation, or at least less toxicity. That's because of you and your leadership at the foundation here. And it means oh, that it, it, and it's changed so much around the feel of the organization from the way I see it. I'm grateful that you took on an ED position and that's working for you, because I know for sure it's working for the foundation.